A new documentary has shed new light on a fleet of Russian ghost ships gathering intelligence in the North Sea. The investigation by four public broadcasters from four Nordic countries rather, say the ships have used underwater surveillance equipment to map key sites. Those include military training areas, oil and gas fields, airports and even wind farms. The broadcasters say some of the ships identify themselves as research vessels or fishing trawlers. But the reports say their route suggests they're up to something else entirely. The Kremlin's chief spokesperson is calling the accusations baseless. Well, Steve Hall is a CNN national security analyst and former chief of Russia operations for the CIA. Steve, thanks for being with us. Great to be here. So in February, Dutch military intelligence reported a Russian ship was detected near an offshore wind farm and was escorted out of the North Sea by the Dutch Coast Guard, with officials later warning Russia is secretly charting this infrastructure and is undertaking activities which indicate preparations for disruption and sabotage. And a few months before that, H.I. Sutton, a, a, a defence analyst, tweeted this. If you live on the east coast of Scotland and you look out your window today, you might see the Russian spy ship Admiral Vladimirsky heading south. Now, it's been known for a while that Russian ships, often described as research vessels or fishing trawlers, have been mapping the location of you know, critical maritime infrastructure. It seems this new information, which is now public, is about the extent of that spying operation, in particular, the number of Russian ships involved. So what more do we know at this point? Well, you know, what we what we know at this point, I think, is sort of a reinforcement or simply an escalation of what really has been going on for decades. Uh, the Russians, uh, certainly since Vladimir Putin took over, but probably before then as well, have always been very active and very active in the Baltic region, especially in the in the Baltic maritime uh, situation, because it's key uh, to how they viewed their defensive posture. And now that NATO has enlarged, notably Finland, which has increased the land border, um, we can't forget, because uh, a lot of people spend a lot of time looking at land maps, there is a huge ocean map, of course, that the Russians have to be concerned about, as do NATO allies, new or old, because of the, the, the huge coastlines that they have. So this is actually something that's been going on for a long time, but the new piece is now we're seeing exactly how large uh, this new effort is to collect that sort of intelligence that the Russians believe that they need because of the threat that they feel from NATO. It's also coming in the background of, of the war in Ukraine. So how does that play into this? Can we expect some kind of Russian attack on these maritime assets? What this is is preparation because they understand that they might have to, there might be a time when they have to either fight to protect themselves or push back, or at least that's what they believe. There's also a propaganda angle to this, John, and that is that the Russians want to say, well, what did you expect? Of course, if NATO is going to act recklessly and threaten Russia, you know, we have to protect our interests. Of course, NATO is a defensive alliance and has no intention of doing anything against Russia unless Russia attacks first. But they have to be prepared, the Russians do, for any eventuality that they think, they think could happen. Yeah, this joint investigation by public broadcasters from four Nordic countries tracked that uh, the aforementioned vessel, the Admiral Vladimirsky, which uh, was approached by journalists uh, from these four broadcasters. Uh, this is what happened in that instance. Here it is. We're filming everything on the ship. We're filming the antennas, as we've been told by the source. I can see crew members walking around on the deck. I think they're watching us. There's two men staring at us. Wow, they're looking at us. This is really a strange situation, almost a tense situation. They're looking at us. Even though this ship had disabled its locator beacon, um, it appears that the, the Lebomirsky had been you know, approaching wind farms, and as it did, it slowed down, it loitered in the area. And according to the Norwegian Broadcasting co uh, Company, that all of these Russian vessels have been sailing past military training areas, important oil and gas fields, small airports, deep water keys, and strategically important hubs for the Norwegian armed forces. So what intelligence are they actually being able to get here, how would that intelligence be used by Russia and how vulnerable are these sites? So this is a this is a, an intelligence bonanza, I think, for, for, for Russia is the best way to say it. Uh, the, the Russians are looking at potential targets that they would consider attacking, perhaps as part of their, their philosophy uh, of, of not necessarily direct warfare, but hybrid warfare. So, you know, we've seen strange things happen beneath uh, the surface of the Baltics, you know, recently there was the, there was the pipeline that somehow was was blown up. We still don't have, at least publicly, don't understand exactly how that happened. But the Russians see great value in targets such as gas pipelines, 
uh, some of these huge communication cables uh, that go across uh, the Atlantic, which carry critical information, not just for the functioning of our society, but for the functioning of, of, of the military as well. Uh, the wind farms, people might be saying, well, what about a wind farm? But when you think about it, that's essentially infrastructure. And if it's energy infrastructure that we're talking about, the Russians are going to be very interested to know how they can make life difficult uh, for the West if they go after some of these targets. So all of that is valuable and viable collection information uh, that the Russians really need if they want to conduct some sort of hybrid warfare that they can later deny so that they don't feel the full wrath of NATO or the West in a military fashion against them. There's a lot there for them that, they're, that they want to collect and are interested in. These ghost ships, they call them, which are floating around without their like, locator beacons on for, you know, for essentially everyone to see, which is quite interesting in all of this. Steve, uh, thank you for being with us. Really appreciate it.